Hello everyone, it's your girl Camson with SCA Thrive and I wanted to bring some information to you that I felt was really relevant and important. So take a seat, check this out. Um, Serena Williams, you know, she had a baby recently and she saved her own life um, by doing what many sickle cell patients have always had to do. After having the baby, everything went fine. She actually bounced back pretty quickly according to this article. Um, and she was back on the court, you know, and I believe that African American women especially are almost looked at as superheroes, even though we may not be Serena and Venus. Um, this has been proven by research of racial disparities uh, among the medical profession. So she had an emergency C-section and she's had a history of blood clots and she knew that something was wrong she could just feel it and i thought this was so powerful because i'm still in the place where i have to force myself to fight for what i know my body needs um so she began to you know just pay attention to her symptoms she knew something wasn't right she had not been taking her blood clot medication um her anticoagulants which helps with blood clotting so you know she just immediately went into fear of it could be a pulmonary embolism and this was this is when the blood clot breaks off and it moves to your heart or your lungs or both and the article says she's kind of lives in fear of that and i can relate to that and see that's the post-traumatic stress i've been speaking of that happens to people who are terminally ill or have had situations like this um so she went to tell the nurse she didn't want her mom to worry she snuck out to tell the nurse look i'm short of breath i need you all to test me she specifically asked for the test that she needed. And the nurse thought that the pain medication was making her confused, right? Have you been there? Yes. Soon enough, the doctor was performing an ultrasound um, of her legs. And she was like, no, a Doppler? I need a CT scan and a heparin drip. And she remembers just telling the team that, can you all imagine? I mean, if, if Serena Williams has this issue, then people, for those of you who this is new to, can you imagine what we go through behind closed doors with physicians and medical staff and nurses sometimes? Um, so finally they listened to her and they got on the heparin drip, did the CT scan, and it came back and showed that she was right. But guess what? They were doing a ultrasound only first and I have been there. Recently I've had this happen. I was concerned about blood clots in my legs. They only did an ultrasound, no CT scan. So this makes me, this really encouraged me and inspired me to fight for it. it it might take a whole year to get the test done and that is not unusual in the sickle cell community but fight for it this surgery saved her life she saved her own life by listening to her body and refusing to be mistreated and neglected and constantly pressing the issue being educated knowing the test that she needs she understood why she needed the CT scan and not just the Doppler or ultrasound. And this is the same way people with sickle cell, you know, they go to the hospital with chest pain and they do a chest x-ray. If it looks okay, they stop there. But that's not always the um, best test to look for something because a lot of things are not gonna catch. And I myself had blood clots in my lungs that could not be seen on the x-ray, but they could be seen in the CT scan and that saved my life. So I can relate to this. Um, and according to a lot of people who've researched this, African Americans are treated as if we're superheroes in the medical profession, and they just don't believe that we're in as much pain um, or experiencing the symptoms we're experiencing. So be encouraged. It's not just us. Serena went through it, and she is a huge inspiration to me. Now, here's another article that explains why African Americans are often undertreated for their pain. And, you know, this is just huge to find these things. So I had to share this with you all because a lot of people don't believe that this is a reality, nor do they see the seriousness of it. But according to researchers at the University of Virginia, um, they found that doctors, residents, 
um, first, second, and third year believe these things about black people and white people. For example, blacks have less sen sensitive nerve endings um, than white people, or black people blood coagulates more quickly. And they found, you know, that pretty much half of them had these very um, stereotypical um, mythological beliefs that weren't accurate or supported by um, me anything medically that, had, that they were being taught. Um, they believe that we, um, you know, we are giving less amounts of pain medication, regardless of what our score is from one to 10 of our pain. And I love this because this psychologist noticed that this is a vexing issue and that white people are more likely than black people to be prescribed strong pain medications. Now the chart here, I could go through this chart. Most of us going through this, we already know these things. So this isn't really for us, maybe to affirm the things that we believe and know, and maybe to just have some proof, you know, um, scientific research from the medical community proving what we have known, experienced most of our lives and continue to experience and deal with. Um, also, the there was a high percentage of them, of course, you know, they test a lot of white people and just, you know, compared to things that they believe and a lot of things that they believe um, weren't even sound logically, you know, more than, um, you know, 50% of black patients, they found you know, that we are treated different for pain. Even our children that go into the emergency room with appendicitis, they receive less pain medication than their white counterparts coming in with the same symptoms for the same thing. Um, a study from 2007 showed that physicians were more likely to underestimate the pain of black patients compared with other patients. Now, according to this research, health disparities have said, have led basically to a lot of these issues. Now, doctors have a difficult time finding empathy with African Americans. This has been proven in this article as well. And so they tested some people, random samples of 92 whites, and they also second queried 222 white medical students and residents at the university and elsewhere. And in both cases, the participants were given a series of statements that contained accurate and inaccurate information about the biological differences of black people and white people. 58% of the study of the general group said that they believe that black skin is thicker than whites, okay? 40% of the first and second year medical students also thought that this was true, as did 25 whopping percent of the residents. Doctors who recently completed their studies and are now receiving more specialized training. Hmm. I'm not too sure about that. And I think if we're not involved in this specialized training, it's probably not going to be beneficial. Um, I digress. They said it was surprising, you know, that so many people believe things that weren't true and, you know, that facts like um, were more susceptible to heart disease than white people. They weren't aware of these facts yet. They were so sure and aware of things that they believed that were based on unconscious stereotyping. And that's what the psychologist who led this study called it herself, okay? They gave them one more test. And within this test, um, of course, there was a white patient and a black patient because they're looking at racial disparities and the issues that we're having. And they were asked to rate each individual's pain as well as treatment recommendations. Well, the research compared the results and physicians who analyzed the cases, right, were like the white people are in much more pain than the black people. Um, and the treatment that they decided to take was more aggressive for white people than black people for the, a lot of the times, the same ailments and conditions. So people, when you hear sickle cell patients mumble, grumble, and complain, it's not because we're mean, it's not because we're bitter and resentful, and if we were angry, that's okay, because we go through a lot. However, the research has proved what many of us know, this has to change. If you can't do anything, if you are a Christian and you believe in God and Jesus, send up a prayer for us if that's the most you can do. If you are blessed with wealth, um, make a donation to the Sickle Cell Foundation of Tennessee or you know, the Sickle Cell Association of America or someone. How about you help someone maybe that you know of sickle cell with something and just offer yourself to be a help to them. There are things that can be done um, on a microchasm, um, you know, um, just level, but do something.